Hey everybody, welcome to a nine part series on how to make animation. And with any luck, a hit animated show. Now look, that is really freaking hard to do. Even if everything goes right, it's still near impossible. But with these tips and tricks that you'll learn over the course of these nine episodes, I think we can help you get there. I'm your instructor, okay? My name is Olin Rogers. I was the creator and executive producer of a little hit animated show internationally called Final Space, okay? It did okay in the States. It didn't get onto a streamer until season three and then it just got Thanos snapped from existence with uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. It's a thing, all right? But uh, what you need to know is that I've developed and I've created a lot of other projects, okay? I've worked with most of the networks out there. I've worked with DC, HBO Max, Adult Swim, uh, Amazon, Disney. I've worked with most of these places, okay? So I have a wealth of knowledge that I'm willing to kind of teach you guys. And if you guys are willing to learn, I'm willing to teach you. I've sold every single project that I've taken out to market. This is true, I have. Every single project. I didn't know that a skill that I had by doing YouTube, by just telling these stories, would translate to something like selling TV shows, but it did. And I'm so excited to teach you these things because I, I really think there's a lot of great talented people out there, creators that are just sitting waiting, but they don't know how to get started, right? They don't know that first step. And this is that first step, okay? This is the episode one of this series, and it's all about the idea. How do you make it? How do you craft it? What are the steps to making sure that this thing can be a show? This video series uh, was possible through the Godspeed Kickstarter. This is an animated short. We're gonna be documenting the process through these episodes. You're gonna see a little bit of the clips behind the scenes of how to make animation while we're actually making animation. I think this is gonna be a really, really cool animated short. I think you're gonna love it. And uh, it really is a spiritual successor to Final Space. Everything that I say in these videos works for me, okay? And it's all about finding the best methods and ways that work for you, okay? You might find things that work for you in this series and you're like, wow, that's really cool. I wanna adapt that to how I write, how I come up with my ideas. Look, animation really is one of the most exciting art forms. And I just, I've, I've fallen completely head over heels in love with it. It's, it's just, it's an art form that's constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. And what I love about it it's, it has this ability to really catch people off guard. And you can sneak up on them with such genuine emotion that they're not expecting and getting. And that's exciting, that's exciting. The first thing I want you to think about, and I always want you to think about this. Anytime you come up with an idea, I want you to think 10 people already have that idea, okay? 10 people already have come up with the exact same idea as you. They're in fact, they're out pitching it, or they're out making it, or they're developing a pitch right now. There's 10 people at least, okay? At least 10 people that have the exact same idea as you. Why do I want you to think this, okay? One, because it's true, okay? There's probably at least 10 people out there that have the exact same idea as you, or something similar. Two, make your thing as unique as possible. Spin it on its head, okay? Come at it in a different angle. Make this thing stand out amongst a pack. Three, I don't want you to get discouraged about this, all right? It happens. Oh my God, it happens. It happens, it's okay, and sometimes another project that's similar and it does well can actually help the project that you're working on. It's the truth. Four, it's okay to shelve a project and come back to it, okay? Might not be a time that sci-fis or fantasies or westerns or whatever are hot in the market right now. It all comes back around eventually. It's okay to shove it for a little while. Work on something else, which leads to the, to the next thing. Work on multiple ideas. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. There's a lot of the times you do that and you can get really discouraged if nothing happens with that one idea because you went all in. You pushed all the chips on, on that one idea. There's ideas that I love and I know for a fact probably won't sell at this time. But that's why I shelve it and I come back to it, okay? Project's never really dead. Just come back to it. A good example of this, a good example of this. I was developing a project called The Lion's Blaze. I've been trying to get this thing made for seven years. Seven years. It actually started for a YouTube series that I made 
was a live action thing, but I decided to do an animated take on it about all these, you know, friends that get sucked into the worst arcade game ever made. And I had to wait 18 months for the rights to come back to me. Now, a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't sign away your rights. But I will say this, if you sell a project to any network ever, they are buying your rights. So if you sell a project, they will own your idea. But while I was waiting, the new Jumanji movie came out with The Rock and Kevin Hart. And I thought, freak, that's not good. That's not good. That's kind of like the same getting pulled into an arcade game. Then a bunch of these other animated shows came out on YouTube and stuff. And I was like, freak, this is what? No, that's not, that's kind of what I'm doing. This is, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's done. Nobody's going to buy this thing now. In 2019, when I took it out to market, every place bought it except for Fox. But I will say I had a stomach virus the night before because I went to the Magic Castle, which is a castle with a bunch of magicians that do magic and stuff like that. And the night after I went there, because I had a bad bacon burger, I was violently ill, violently ill. And I pitched that thing. I was a shade of white, not seen by most humans, okay? And I pitched it. Boy, I, pit I was there, I was pitching it. But they didn't buy it. <laughs> but everybody else did, everybody else did. And um, it was really, I think it was really because of the story behind the project. It was special, it was real, it was personal, it was raw, it was emotional. And it was funny. It was fun. It was it was adventurous. It was an epic. It was it was hitting everything it needed to hit. An idea without a good story is like biting into a Reese's peanut butter cup with no peanut butter. It's just a hollow shell of mediocre chocolate. That's not good. You ah, throw it away. Get it out. Get throw it away. Get that thing out of there. All right. An idea is not a story. Okay, and this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see first time creators do, is they think they have this great idea for a project, a show, they, and they go all in on it, but they don't know what the story is. There's no story to it, okay? It's like thinking, okay, I have a, uh, a, an idea about two time traveling brothers. Cool, <laughs> okay, cool, awesome. What's it about? Tell me what it's about. They think that's the show. That is not the show. What is the story? That's the show. We were talking about lines, boys. Let me give you another example. The idea of that is a bunch of friends that get sucked into an arcade game, the worst one ever made. That's an idea, okay? Not really a story. How does that go multiple seasons? So for the story, I pulled from my real life. And this is a great place to pull a story from. It's real. You've, you've experienced it, okay? You've lived it. Did your parents get divorced? Did you lose a friend? When I think about the lines, boys, I think about my friend, Jake. And when I made the proof of concept, for Lions Blaze, Jake got really, really, really sick. And we didn't know what it was. There was a time that I thought I might not, I might, he might not make it. And with life and death, you start really thinking about the first time you met this person, like what, 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 what was it? How did you become friends with him? And I remember it, like I went to Indiana to do a live show and I actually stayed at his house for the first time I ever met this guy. And, uh, we stayed up all night playing Call of Duty Zombies. <laughs> and I'm telling you, at the end of that night, I felt like I knew that guy for 10 years. And we became instant friends. And I still, we still had one of the greatest playthroughs of Diablo 2 that I've ever experienced in my life. One of the funniest and fun nights of my life. From there, we put Fallout 2, Age of Empires 2. Look, it's, it's all these things, games and friendship, just go hand in hand. And then a thought entered my head, what if I never get a chance to play another game with him? Like that was it. And I even get emotional like thinking about it, you know? That's how you know it's real. That's how you know it's in there. It's like I think about if that was the last game I got to play with my best friend. It's heartbreaking. So having those things connected really makes for a great story. And you can have it be fun, right? You can, it can, yes, it can be funny, it can be adventurous, epic, a fantasy, it can be all these things. Guys get pulled into a, the worst arcade game ever made. But over here, it's about, what if this is the last chance he gets to play with his best friend? <sighs> That's exciting. I can't tell you any more about it, okay? Because I'm working on it, I'm developing. See, idea, story, and how you fuse those together to make something really compelling. Friendship in general is such a potent subject. I mean, for a lot of people it is. 
I mean, I can count on maybe one and a half hands, right, of like how many friends were genuine that wanted nothing from me other than just to be my friend. There's so many people that have, that have said that they were my friend and it made me feel terrible, you know? And you start thinking about that and friendship and why a great friend means so much. The person getting sucked into a video game has been done. Tron, Jumanji, okay, it's, it's been done. But what is your way? How do you use your voice to tell it in your way that only you can tell it? With Godspeed, it actually took a lot longer to find the story to that idea. We had the idea, but not the story. What was that thing we were trying to say with the time that we have, you know? And then it was right in front of us. It was right in front of us. When Final Space got canceled, that was the death, right? That was it dying, <laughs> okay? Like it was dying, it's dead. They killed it. But something else happened. Something else happened there. Warner Brothers didn't decide to make it vanish from every platform. We're talking iTunes, Amazon. You can buy it anywhere. It's off HBO Max. It's soon gonna be gone from Netflix. That, right there, what did that make me feel? It was the fear of being forgotten. Dying, whatever. But the fear of being forgotten is so powerful. And I really wanted to lean in on that. Like, not only is it the fear of being forgotten, but how do you find that hope in your darkest moment? And that's when we tapped into that, that's when the door opened of like following hope. Hope, that's the theme. That's the theme of the entire thing. That's the story that we're gonna tap into. And that's the special power of this main character is hope. What's that thing you wanna say? And that's the beautiful thing about animation. You can pick and choose anything you wanna talk about under the shell of anything, the genre of anything. And yeah, it's vulnerable. You're going to be vulnerable. You're going to be tapping into things that you never thought you would be opening up to. But that's the, that's what people want to see. That's what people want to watch. I want to watch your story. You know? I'm sure you're wondering the answer to the scariest question of them all. How do I know if my idea is any good? You don't. You don't. You do not know if it's any good. <laughs> you can have a gut feeling. You can, but what I will say from experience, there will always be somebody that does not like every single choice you make, okay? There's always gonna be critiques, there's always notes, there's always will be somebody that hates the thing that you made. It's a part of it. If you put it out there into the world, you will have people that hate it, but you also will have people that love it. You have to dare to fail, all right? You just have to. That's a t-shirt, dare to fail. It all starts with your idea. If this is where, right before you put pen to paper, this is the idea process, coming up with a story. Talk about it with other people. Now, this is only part one. There is so much more information to be told, okay? I had to break it up into nine episodes. If you wanna stay updated with the Godspeed Project, you can go to godspeedseries.com. Up there, we still have the pledges from the Kickstarter. A lot of people wanted to pledge later after the Kickstarter. You can buy consulting sessions on there. There's also even a thing where if you want me to help you hand in hand develop your entire project and get it to the pitching stage, it, everything's up there. Um, I'm about to launch a whole consulting little company. <laughs> um, and I, I think I've, I've been helping a lot of creators out. I've helped first time creators sell projects. I think this is gonna be a really, really fun, rewarding project for myself. And I just want people to make great animation. And that's the whole point of this, okay? It's, it's just have fun, make things, and dare to fail. Guys, this is episode one. I'm Owen Rogers. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe.